Alrighty, it's quite late, and I've been running this for do -do 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 seven hours, eight hours now. Um, so this is the full setup with two 800 watt chillers, 800 watt one chilling uh, jacket around the line of the second one, uh, just before the thermal expansion valve. As you can see, there's quite a lot of ice happening here. Um, but as you might note, there's no ice in this one. It's because I turned it off. Um, this one has been holding negative 40 uh, solid for a long time. Um, so I don't know if it just needs that one to sort of bootstrap it or something. Um, but actually, that one froze itself. It got so, well, as far as I can tell, um, the glycol stopped flying. Um, so I have to assume it's because the heat exchanger got clogged. Um, maybe because it froze, maybe because of detritus. Um, but I shut it down and flushed it backwards and it started up again. But I turned it off for a test and this, yeah, this maintained negative 40 by itself. Um, so that pipe diameter is the same as the pipe that's buried deep inside this snow here. Quite a lot. Ah, oh, you got it on my fingernails. Yuck. Um, so I've got a little microcontroller here on Wi-Fi with a couple of uh, DS18B20 temperature probes um, so I could do some cool graphs because I love myself a graph. Um, but yeah, I've just been keeping an eye on that. Um, so there's a bunch, it's not really possible to see inside the cold trap, but there's a, there's a bunch of ice in there. Uh, not a bunch, maybe uh, a bit. Um, but I don't want to leave this running overnight. I don't really trust it not to catch fire with that. Um, eyes on it. Um, so I've had the water at 90 degrees um, since uh, the last five hours um, and it's been at, uh, I don't really know how low it's been, it's somewhere between uh, 400 pascals and uh, 1.6 kilopascals. It needs to be under 600 for this to work um, so I don't know if it is going to work. Um, but let's vent the vacuum and see what happens. We've got some mango in there. It's crunchy. Oh, it's dry. Look at that. Um, so I can tell by feeling it, feeling it, that it is not completely dry but um, it's definitely on the way there um, but it hasn't really got the texture see here come on it's got a different texture there to what it does down here and that's the stuff that was directly in contact with the metal and that stuff is freeze dried this stuff here is not this is just sort of desiccated and I suspect the top is similar yeah it's got a completely different texture and inside there's still wet mango okay so that's very interesting well um, not it doesn't teach me anything new um, well I, I know that it needs to have contact with something hot in order to drive off the moisture um, but this setup was to prove that the cold trap uh, system works um, without dry ice, which is great. Um, so I can now be a bit more experimental with my setup, like look at putting um, heating elements inside there and, and stuff like that, um, without spending large amounts of money on dry ice every time I want to run a test. Um, so let's have a look inside our cold trap here. Quite cold in there, as you can imagine. Ah, oh, look at those crystals. Those are some nice big ice crystals. Growing very slowly. Okay, so uh, once again, I forgot to weigh the mango before I started, um, but I'll weigh the amount of water. Water. Um, so the last slice I did um, was about eight millimeters thick and an oval of about 15 uh, 150 millimeters in diameter and that was about 100 grams of water that came out of that so I would estimate that this is significantly less than that even though that piece of mango is bigger 
Um, so I think thin slices, better heating, and I'll be well on my way to freeze dried mango. And nothing clogging the hole, which is a benefit of a, a warmer cold bath, because the dry ice cold bath is at negative 65 odd, uh, whereas this one is at negative 40. Right, I'm going to eat that mango now. Bye-bye.